Hi, this is Phil Newman, and I'm joined today by CEO and founder of Matrix Bio, Tom Benson. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, Phil. How are you? Yeah, great. And now, Tom, you've been doing a lot of work recently in publishing uh, ideas and thoughts about mitochondrial theory and, and discussing a lot about that recently. So let's talk about that. Steve, we've got two papers, I understand. One, the mitochondrial cycle of the body, and the other is, you know, how does degradation of mitochondrial DNA drive lifespan? So could you explain a bit about these? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of new research in the field in the last 10 years that is really upending our view of mitochondria and how they um, how they work, uh, which is important because mitochondria are kind of the basis of everything. I mean, without mitochondria, we would not have life forms larger than bacteria. So this is really critical. <clears throat> now, the normal textbook view of mitochondria that you will see is that there are these little organelles inside the cells and they're, they're just the cells create new ones whenever it needs them. They're the powered house of the cell and so forth. And that's about as far as it goes. But what we're finding out is that reality is a hundred times more sophisticated than that. <clears throat> mitochondria don't just sit in cells. In fact, uh, mitochondria are transferring constantly between cells inside the tissue, being loaned between cells. Mitochondria are loaned and transferred by stem cells. Uh, that's actually one of the primary functions of stem cells, and this has been shown in a lot of research. Uh, mitochondria are also distributed via extracellular vesicles in the bloodstream. So um, based on that, we've developed uh, a theory called the mitochondrial cycle of the body. And this is based on this latest research that shows, we think, that um, mitochondria are not only being transferred around, but in fact, there's a bank or a storehouse, very significant storehouse of fresh, young, unused mitochondrial DNA that is stored probably in your bone marrow and other places, maybe in stem cells, and that the body is constantly drip feeding or, or rationing these young, fresh mitochondria to the peripheral cells the peripheral tissues, because what happens is in the course of day-to-day -day life and, and escaping from predators and whatever else animals do, those external mitochondria are getting burned out. And so in order to extend lifespan, the body is providing replacement mitochondria, fresh. <clears throat> That's the mitochondrial cycle of the body. We also have some work coming up about mitochondrial degradation in cells. Why is it that mitochondria degrade, or more specifically, why do mitochondrial DNA degrade? So what about the concept of mitochondrial DNA degradation? How does that drive aging and lifespan? Okay, so as I said, we have this idea of this mitochondrial cycle, which has to continuously supplement the mitochondrial DNA out in the, out in the stressed tissues because they're burning out their mitochondrial DNA. So why are they burning out their mitochondrial DNA? Why don't they just replicate them cleanly? <clears throat> well, uh, if you look at the, the latest research, and there, even just in the last few months, there's been some brilliant papers that have come out that have explained that it's all based on how the mitochondria is being replicated. If it's replicating in a stressful situation, like you're running, to escape a predator or you're under a lot of stress at work or whatever the stress environment is, that causes your mitochondria to replicate, let's say, very quickly in order to, to produce a lot of results very quickly, but not very accurately. So the DNA is losing, its, um, it's acquiring um, errors in the DNA during that kind of sloppy replication, okay? And that is a, it's an important part of survival, but the problem is it doesn't lead to long life. So there's, over the course of our lives, 80, 90 years, uh, that mitochondrial DNA degradation just becomes unstoppable. It's like the tide flowing out. And by the time we're 95 years old, our mitochondrial DNA have just completely degenerated. Our body can no longer keep 
us going with what it has. It's it's managing that inventory, but eventually it just starts running out of mitochondrial DNA. It runs out of energy, and that's when we really start to age quickly, and then eventually we succumb to a disease or we just die. So how does this relate back to the early discussion about the team's discovery of mitlets? Yes. So yes, we're studying mitlets, and mitlets are mitochondria that are encased in an extracellular vesicle and and being it's being used to transport fresh mitochondria back and forth in different tissues and of course the first mitlets that we found came from platelets if you uh, if you let a platelet reach its end age or if you activate it it squirts out its mitochondria it has five mitochondria it squirts them out in these little vesicles and what we found was those vesicles were immediately absorbed by all the other platelets and white blood cells and tissues nearby. So clearly, these mitlets are a system for recycling mitochondria. But we also realized that if you look at the flow of them, if there's 100 billion platelets created per day in the average human body, and those platelets are releasing five mitochondria in, in vesicles, at the end of their lifespan. That means that the body is supplementing, all of the rest of the body is being supplemented from these platelets with 500 billion a day, new mitochondria, okay? So, and, and that's not the only one. There are, mit there are mitlets we found in the, in the um, neural system, in, in the cardiac system. There's probably dozens of different types of mitlets throughout the body being used to distribute these fresh mitochondria. So we think that in addition to, to stem cells and some of these other mechanisms, we think that these mitochondrial extracellular vesicles are the body's number one way of distributing fresh mitochondria to the tissues. Okay, Tom, well, thanks a lot. That's been really interesting. Good to see you again. All right. No, nice talking to you, Phil.